This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today, we're talking about smoke. Let's get to it. The general understanding is you need to vent smoke from your house because smoke can build up in your house and if it does, it can damage you and it can even put out your fire. Today, we're gonna cover anything and everything you need to know about smoke, starting with how much space you need to actually vent smoke. So I have a little setup right here and you can see that we have it enclosed here in the back and if we watch, the smoke's gonna build up in here and the fire will eventually go out because it has nowhere to vent. There you go, you can see it just went out. Now this is a mechanic that took me a while to understand. At first I thought it was a bug and then I realized it's actually because of smoke. The smoke builds up in there and it isn't until it dissipates a little bit that the fire will actually light up again. Because the smoke in this game is just particles, it's just particle effects, and the it's large particles, and those particles have a lifespan. They eventually just fade away, and you don't actually have to vent if you don't mind your fire always going out. So, like, it goes out, but as soon as enough particles die off, as you see there, it just pops back into existence. So, let's take a look here at the back. Let's pop this off, and we'll take a look at venting smoke. So, as you can see right now, with this large full wall size, we're venting smoke just fine. However, if I grab a single pillar here and we place it down like that, you can see that the smoke stops and we can verify this, that it's not actually venting out of those holes there because if we stand over here, the smoke, the fire will eventually go out again. There you go, you can see the fire just went out again. So in real life, this should be plenty of room to vent smoke. The smoke should just go through there with no issue at all. But unfortunately in Valheim, the particles are much larger than what you would expect. Even if we were to do something like this, we can place uh, one of these right here. And then we place another one on top of it. We will eventually start to choke off the smoke. You can see there, it's still venting, and then there, it just stopped. Did you see it just stop right there? You can see it literally just hanging right there and not venting out the back. And we can verify that it is not working once again because the fire went out again. There is no ventilation. It this Even this is not enough room for the smoke to vent out. If we delete this here, once again, you can see the smoke vents just fine. So now that you have an idea of how big the particles are and how much room they actually need to vent, let's go over here and take a look at their lifespan and a few other things here. So you can see I have setups here. Now that we know that the smoke can't actually get through this setup here because the spaces aren't big enough, it allows us to capture the smoke and watch how it works. So I have a setup here that is nine walls high, so 18 meters high. And we can actually see the lifespan of the smoke, how long it sticks around. So it travels almost to this 18 meter mark up here, if I can get in the right position here. So if we just watch it, you can see it's going to get almost up there, it like reaches right at the bottom. I tried to make it easy enough to see. You can see it's coming to right about here before they disappear, before the particles hit their lifespan. So if you were to vent smoke straight up, about 18 meters is as high as it's going to go. Knowing this allows us to play with those physics a little bit in different ways. So if you take a look here, I have a setup where the fire will actually stay burning, but there is no venting situation. You can see I have this completely closed off and we can see how the smoke reacts. First off, the smoke doesn't really roll well. You can see it hits the top here and it kind of hangs out and then it, it is pushing the, the particles and the new particles that are forming come up and they push the old particles over. It doesn't roll across, it comes up, it hits, it sticks and it stays. And then the new particles that form come up here and do the same because it wants to raise. And then it gets to a situation where it's too cluttered here and then it will push the new particles over this way. Luckily enough, it pushes, it has enough force to push the other particles out of the way that it doesn't build up over our fire enough to put our fire out. You can do a su super simple system like this and pretty much always have your fire going. It does go out on occasion with this setup here. And I'm glad that this is like actual perfect timing there um, because I was getting ready to transition to almost all the time. Um, you can almost all the time have your fire as you see there with this situation here, only venting or not venting, but uh, putting a, an area for the fire to go to about right here. So if you take a look here, that is one whole walls distance. So we have one up 
and one over. That's gonna get you an almost continuous fire. However, if you do a system like this, where we are also, once again, not venting, this is all enclosed, it's just open with the, the uh, beams and pillars so that you can see, we go up one, two, and then over one, creates a situation where the particles can't build up over top of the fire long enough ever for it to put the fire out. So you can create a setup like this and never actually have to vent your smoke and just contain the smoke and it will hold inside of the chamber until the particles die off. So if we put a slanted roof here, you can see now the particles are actually coming up here, they're hitting it, they're rolling, and they're pushing a little bit further. We're actually getting to that second wall area. So beforehand, they were stopping in this area right here, and now if you take a look, you can see them showing up right at the edge here. They're disappearing right as they get to the edge over here. So you can watch, here they go, they're gonna push over, they're gonna come right to the edge here and then disappear. So now we're gonna take a look at the 26 degree roof. If we place that up there at the top, we also create another slant. So they're going to not get stuck up there quite as much. They're going to hit that and they're gonna move forward. But you'll notice that they move forward a lot more now. Now we can really, really notice them over here. Before, when we were only getting little wisps and you had to look really, really closely to see them, now the smoke is pushing over here without any issue at all and it's pushing much further further. I don't know why, but for some reason, the 26 degree roof seems to have more effect over the smoke than the 45 degree. So now that we know this, we can come up with some creative ways to vent smoke. One of the first things I want to do is talk about some mistakes. So this is a mistake I've actually made many times before I started to go on my smoke discovery journey here. Uh, you can see here, I have this set up here. I assumed that it would vent, but it's not. Actually, what's happened here is I've just created a pocket for the smoke to hang out in and it's actually pushed over here and it's hanging out here as well. If we come up here and we take a look, you can see that none of the smoke, oh, that's probably the wrong side I should be looking at there because you're seeing the other smoke. None of the smoke's actually getting out. It's not being vented at all. Even if I was to do something where I just delete these, it's not gonna make a difference because we already know that this is not enough space for the smoke to actually vent through. It needs much, much more area to get through. So we're just just going to delete that. Now let's do something like this. If we were to do something like this, this is going to be plenty of room for the smoke to actually vent out of. You can see the smoke's going to rise up there. It's going to hit the roof and it's going to vent out without any issues at all. So if we actually wanted to create a raised roof similar to what we had there, we would actually have to take this up a full two meters and then put a beam across here and then put our roof like that. Now that we have that going across the top like that, now we can see that there's enough room for the, the smoke to actually get out. But that, that looks terrible. At that point, you may as well just do a full chimney like we've done here. And you can see here, there's not enough room for the smoke to vent through here. It's actually venting out the sides. If you take a look here, you can see it's coming out this way and it's coming out this way. It's not coming through these holes here. These, however, are big enough for the smoke to actually vent out. And if we go inside here, you will be able to see that we're smoke free and everything looks good. I've also created a chimney here because you can actually create a chimney over top of your fire and catch the particles as they're going up. Creating something like this is just a really good way to make sure that all of the smoke gets vented out of your house and doesn't, you know, none of it leaks around because we know that this isn't, this is just small enough here that the smoke actually can't slip through the sides here and we're catching it all and venting it out the top. Something else you can do is something similar to what I've done here where we're catching that smoke and we're venting it out the back. Now, a lot of things will stop the smoke from coming out the back. Even the banners will, but the way that I have the banners hanging here to cover up the hole will actually allow it to go out. If I were to place, and I was doing a bunch of testing because I was trying to find a way to remove the particles so that you could essentially have a super small area and just delete the particles, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it. But I did figure out that if you hang a bunch of banners, something similar to like this, it will actually block the smoke and the smoke won't get through and our fire will eventually go out. It'll actually, if the ban if the smoke touches this banner here, if we go in here, you'll see that it's just hanging in there. 
And you can see that, look at it, it's just like straight up hanging and our fire actually went out. But if we go through here and we delete these, if we just wanna vent the smoke, but we don't want this like ugly hole in the back of our house, we can easily cover that up with whatever banners you want. Just leave a small gap in between them, just big enough that they connect like so. And then you can see that the smoke is venting out the back without any issue. And this helps just disguise the hole that you have in the back of your house a little bit and still allows you to vent smoke nice and easy. But as we've learned from the way that particles work, you don't actually have to vent smoke at all. Here I've just created a chimney that catches the smoke and then a chamber right up here to just hold the smoke. So it gives the particles time, they come up here, they hang out, they die and more particles fill and then they come over, they reach over to here and then they die and uh, we don't actually ever have to vent the smoke. Here's another situation where I did similar thing. So we have a chimney catching the smoke. Now this space here should be big enough, this space right here should be big enough for the smoke to actually squeeze out a little bit. But I'm not too worried about it because we're not gonna lose too much and we're catching a majority of it with this first ring here. This gap here, as we've learned already, is small enough that the smoke can't actually get out. And then all I've done here is we're just venting all of this inside of our attic. It's just collecting up here. So if we, uh, go up here and we just delete this wall here, you can see I've just created an attic up here. So we're just catching all of the smoke in the attic. It's hanging up in there. There's plenty of room for it to collect. And then the particles just die off and we continuously fill it and we never have to worry about actually having a chimney or venting the smoke. Now, you can also come up with some creative solutions for chimneys and catching the smoke, knowing that we can create gaps. So I have a similar setup here where we're venting the smoke out the back and I was doing some testing on things here. And uh, if we, let me step out here so you can actually like get a good view of what's going on. I wanted this hidden until we actually take a look at it. So you can see here that I just have the three of the slanted beams going across the top here, but we're not actually venting any smoke into the house. It's all being pushed out the back. If we come back here, you can see that it's being pushed out and down. We're using the stairs to angle the smoke down. Then we just have a two little uh, two part ring here and the smoke comes up, hits the stairs and then shoves down and then out. Inside here, we have a full open, well, uh, almost fully open. Uh, I, once again, I was just running tests with thing, things. Uh, we have a fully open fireplace now with just a three part chimney or three part smoke catcher here. And uh, yeah, you're venting everything just fine. I think this actually looks kind of nice. All right, so I hope this was informational for you and I hope this helps many of you builders out there come up with some more creative solutions to dealing with smoke in your builds. I look forward to hearing about some of your ideas and stuff down in the comments and seeing creative builds on Reddit and all of that good stuff. If you found the video helpful and informational, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out other Valheim content. And I don't just cover Valheim, I cover all kinds of different games, so you never know when I'm going to be making guides or content for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. You are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite crew of Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.